My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCahn.com. This podcast is entitled, Your Next Coworker Could Be a Bot. Are you wondering what a bot is and whether the bots are gunning for your job? A category of digital technology called Robotic Process Automation, or RPA, is finally making its debut in oil and gas. It's not like this is a new invention. These kinds of tools evolved in the late 1990s. But of course, there hasn't been the cost pressure in oil and gas to confront some of its more deeply embedded office practices until recently. RPA first appeared in a serious way in the world of online computer video games, as far back as 2001. There's even a term for them, a computer-controlled player. Colloquially, they're called bots, or short for robots. In the gaming world, bots record user inputs, basically when a gamer has to navigate across lots of menus, selecting various options and switches, and plays them back at much higher speeds than a human can. For example, in World of Warcraft, a popular online game with 5.5 million players, Bots were originally created to expedite boring tasks like collecting weapons and armor and selling them to other players. In fact, bots were so good at that job that they were banned for giving an unfair advantage to the human players who built them. Try to get your head around something so efficient at reducing non-value-added work that it was banned. Today, the same kinds of outrageous performance gains are reported in businesses that use bots. Productivity improvements on the order of 80 to 90 percent versus a planned gain of 60% are common. The London School of Economics took a look at RPA case studies and included that ROI ranges from 30 to 200%. It turns out that as much as three quarters of what we think of as high value work by humans is actually quite routine and mundane, something that a bot could do quickly and easily. A simple but incorrect comparison would be to think of bots in a business context as akin to an Excel macro, but bots are much more sophisticated. A bot executes by copying keystrokes, mouse clicks, and window navigation from a recording button, performing the task, optimizing itself, and repeating the task while making efficiency improvements each time. They can therefore self-write code, execute that code, and then optimize the code over time. Can't get Excel to do that. In business, bots are used by hundreds of companies around the world to automate tasks that involve repetitive computer-based desk work including copying data from one system to another, maintaining Excel spreadsheets, handling repetitive email and processing forms-based data. The best bots work across desktop software systems and have universal compatibility to work with just about any application out there, including SAP, Oracle, Outlook, Salesforce, Workday, Citrix, and of course, Excel. Under the hood, bots are built from two digital technologies a machine learning platform called Cognitive Automated Process, or CAP, and a Unified Test Management Solution, or UTMS. The CAP is fed data from some source, that is, text, video images, screens, forms, whatever, restructures the data, and inputs it into the UTMS, which applies an algorithm to it. Setting up a bot is quicker than implementing other systems because configuration is much faster, by as much as 60%. A large oil and gas company would have many potential candidate work processes for bots. To make the economics work, that is, to pay for the bot software and the cost to implement, processes should have some combination of volume, i.e. lots of transactions, time pressures or deadlines, and cost, measured by numbers of seats involved in the process or the cost of those seats. Processes with high error rates could also be a consideration. One way to find a candidate processes is to install a keystroke listener on the network to record and then analyze for patterns. A second approach is to go through the org charts to identify job roles that appear to be there for the volume of work to be done. A third way is to just ask the employees to identify that part of their job that a computer should be doing. Trust me, they know. Managers should also be able to identify those parts of the business that involve many separate systems that need to be kept in sync. And if all else fails, just go looking for filing cabinets, a reasonably reliable sign of administrative burden. Here's just a few areas where RPA should be able to make an impact in oil and gas. Let's begin with finance. Financial management in some oil and gas companies consumes as much as 10% of the headcount. 
invoice processing and accounts payable, tax calculations, capturing field tickets, processing royalties and payments, production accounting, financial close processes, and report preparation would benefit from RPA. Some sites have reported that RPA has reduced the time it takes to process an invoice from 20 minutes to 45 seconds. Next area is human resources. Oil and gas companies are not like banks with thousands of employees, but larger producers will have enough employees to require volume-driven administrative roles in HR. Processing leave requests, handling inbound job applications, updating payroll records, and general HR reporting would be candidates for bots. The shared service centers used by big international oil companies all rely on bots, particularly for HR. Next area would be in operations. Depending on the company, there will be volumes of repetitive work moving data between operational systems like SCADA, Excel spreadsheets, and corporate systems recording volumetric data about products, waste outputs, emissions, water handling, energy consumption, and related. As ops adds more sensors, the additional burden from processing all the data will drive more data capture and analysis, which could benefit from RPA. Other candidate areas include exploration analytics, drilling optimization, compliance reporting, and operational reporting. Next area is in the supply chain. Contracting and procurement functions are still very much in control of oil and gas spending to help keep these costs from rising, but at the price of introducing more processes. RPA could help with purchase order generation and processing, spend approvals, vendor management, catalog management, inventory record keeping, and reporting. Finally, in IT and call centers, bots have been very active in these kinds of shared service centers for years, helping answer calls, processing trouble tickets, updating incident systems, and handling escalations. Oil and gas companies have many mini call centers for things like incident reporting, employees and vendor support, vendor inquiries, and so on. If you want a successful bot program, here's just a few tips from the early adopters. Number one is to have a clear game plan. Bot technology has lots of promise, but without a clear game plan, companies can end up creating yet more problems to solve. Functional departments and operations could all purchase bot engines independently and leave a big piecemeal mess to clean up. Sustainment dollars need to be set aside to support the bot technology. Bots are not that responsive to changes in their environment, so it becomes someone's job to keep the bots current. It's not unusual that companies find themselves with hundreds of bots, which could create very inconsistent outcomes and duplicative efforts. Clearly, there's an enterprise angle to consider. Next tip is to get IT involved. Bots are a layer of technology that sit above, but plug into, other critical company computer systems. In fact, a bot that interacts with an ERP system is best treated like another human user with its own powerful desktop computer, logon IDs, access permissions, and so forth. Bots can create security risks if they're not managed. Someone who looks after a bot, configuring it and testing it, will have access rights that are much greater than the rights of typical users. Integrating into a complex IT environment will demand the support of IT and most likely operations IT or OT leadership. They should get involved early. And then last but not least is to manage the change. It would be easy for employees to conclude that bots are going to take over their jobs. In my view, there's no doubt that bots will eliminate some jobs in oil and gas. 50 joint venture accountants shrinks down to 5. But the 45 who are now surplus to need could be put to work on other tasks. Early adopters frequently report that bots become more like smart personal assistants, or pets, that leave their human colleagues to take on more demanding, complex, creative problem-solving, and not the job-destroying, soulless machines of science fiction. Some humans will even become bot wranglers, taking on the care and feeding of the bots. Getting the impacted workforce involved will help ease the transition. So yes, your next coworker is likely to be a bot. They might not be much for coffee catch-ups, but they'll be killer at their job. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.